my finance teacher in uh, high school, Mr. Deal, he taught me how to invest and make my money make money for itself. Um, I'm going to rephrase that. How to get my money to make money. Um, so investing in stocks, bonds, ETFs, he really taught me that deal. And also like, you know, having credit cards isn't as bad as people make it, you know, out, out to be. Rishi, how are you doing today? Good, good. How are you? Good, man. Thank you so much for asking. Thank you so much for your support and for allowing us to give you an interview. Yeah. Let's get started. What is your highest level of education? Uh, so I graduated from Penn State with a bachelor's in aerospace engineering. Perfect. What do you do for a living? I'm a systems engineer. Uh, yeah, defense contractor. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> what social class were you growing up? Um, I'd say I was basically middle class. Um, yeah. Were there any struggles? Uh, no, not really. I mean, you know, my parents got laid off here and there, um, you know, during the 2008 crisis, you know, my dad got laid off. But other than that, when my parents have been in the same jobs, more or less. So, yeah. So when 2008 happened, like you didn't even notice it of how... Yeah, I was so young, you know, I didn't even, you know, pick up on the financial troubles that were going on. So I was kind of shielded from all that, thankfully, but um, yeah. And I think that like, your parents also did a, a great job, you know, at like not showing that aspect of things. Yeah, so. they definitely did. They they tried their best to teach us, but, you know, also shield us from all the harsh realities of everything. So Nice. What do your family talk about money? Yeah. So my parents, both of them, really into finance and they made sure from a very young age I was exposed to it. You know, some of my favorite memories was going with, you know, my dad to the bank. I still remember uh, CD Bank and going, taking my piggy bank and dropping all the coins in and counting all the coins. So they exposed me to money very early on. Would you say that that was your first interaction with money then? Yeah, definitely. It was my first interaction. Um, they tried to make me save as much as I could when I was young, just to, you know, teach that principle early on. Excellent. All right, we're going to go over our first session called Dollars and Cents. This one is about behavioral questions to evaluate your money habits. We have generated five random questions. So question number one is, what are the top three college degrees? Um, so I would say engineering, um, computer science, and then somewhere in the medical field. I think those jobs are, you know, extremely important and they're never going to go away, I feel like. So it's definitely all three fields are always growing. So I think those are the three most important. Excellent. Question number two. If you had to make $1,000 without your current job or business in 20 days, how would you do it? Uber driving. Hands down, Uber driving, DoorDash. Like, I used to do that back in high school, and oh my God, it'd make a good amount of money for, you know, the amount of time and effort you would put into it. I think you could definitely easily make $1,000 if you really put your mind to it, so. What was your best day when you were doing it? Uh, around $50, $60, and granted, that was only for, like, about 30, 40 minutes tops. Yeah. So it, it's some pretty good money there. Um, especially if you need to make $1,000 in 20 days, you can easily do it. And especially in the area we live in, College Town, you pick up Uber drivers, work a few nights, and you'll easily make that money. All right. Question number three. What is an asset and a liability for you? So personally for me, I think an asset is something that you can easily turn into money, has more upside. Liability, you can still turn that into money, but I think there's more risk involved in it. So... I think that would definitely describe the differences between the two. Question number four, what steps do you take to manage credit card debt effectively? So for me, I feel like checking very regularly is the best step to do it. So I try my best to check, you know, once a week, as much as I hate to do it. <laughs> you know, you see it and you're like, oh my gosh, how much did I spend this week? Um, but, you know, I try my best to check every Friday or every Thursday, you know, and, you know, pay it off as best as I can. Um, and usually I try to pay the full amount. If not, you know, pay a good amount of it, maybe 60%, 25%. Um, and then, you know, next week pay off as much as I can. So do you track your expenses? Yes, I do. So honestly, one of my favorite parts of the week is when I, I would say the month is when I go through my budget and I sit there on my spreadsheet, typing away, looking at my budget and all my income and all my expenses. I very much enjoy that. I don't do it at like a weekly level, but I try to do it at a monthly level because a weekly level, that's it's a little too much for me right now with everything going on. So Excellent, man. Yeah. Sometimes I even do it daily. So <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I wish I would do it daily, but, you know, don't do much. I go I go to work and I go home and go to bed. So, you know. And then finally, the last question, how did you learn your most valuable financial skill? Um, So I would say it's probably a combo, if you don't mind about that. So I think for my parents, I learned a lot about saving and being able to understand that, hey, I should bring in more and not spend as much. 
Um, and then second of all, I think another equally important um, aspect of finance I learned was from my finance teacher in uh, high school, Mr. Deal. He taught me how to invest and make my money make money for itself. Um, I'm going to rephrase that. How to get my money to make money. Um, so investing in stocks, bonds, ETFs, he really taught me that deal. And also like, you know, having credit cards isn't as bad as people make it, you know, out, out to be. So I think those two, those two um, were the biggest factors. Now you mentioned that you took a class. Mm -hmm. uh, it was like a financial literacy course during your uh, high school years. Yeah. Was that an elective or is it something that everyone has to go through that? So that's an elective. Um, and I'm really glad I took that. My yeah. parents pushed me to do it. And I was also very receptive in, you know, wanting to take it. But I definitely, I know this might be a little bit of a tangent, but I definitely think that it shouldn't be mandatory for like high schoolers. Because a lot of kids go out there and they don't know that much about finance. Hell, I don't even know that much. I mean, tax season's coming up. I don't even know what to do with my taxes. Like, I have no clue. So like, I think it's a class that everyone should take either in high school, maybe even more in college, but probably high school because not everyone goes to college. Um, I think it's super important, especially if you see nowadays, a lot of people are stuck in student debt, you know, people were very poor in, you know, operating their finances and managing their finances. So even having a class in high school would be super helpful for everyone. Yeah, definitely. I mean, one of the things that we're really trying to create with Muddy Ballistic is just to like, you know, have people share their own experience so that others can just benefit from that. Exactly. And I agree with you. I mean, when I was in high school, that was not even an option. Mm -hmm. So when you mentioned that, I was like, man. Was that mandatory? Was an elective? Great. We didn't even have that elective. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah. And I, I was very beneficial with the school district. I came up in like a lot of good electives and that was one of the ones they offered. And I'm very happy that I took it. Not everyone took it, but I'm very glad that I took it because it taught me a lot of skills that I use today, you know, even in work and even in just my personal finance. Yeah. Another elective will be now taxes. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know, right? I can't wait for that. It's going to be fun. <laughs> How would you describe your relationship with money? I'd say I have a very positive relationship with money. Um, I see it as a tool that I can use to enjoy life, you know, spend money on going out to eat, traveling. You know, there are downsides to it, you know, paying off my college loans, debt, uh, bills. But overall, I'd say I have a very positive relationship with money. Excellent. What is the best financial advice that you can give based on your personal experience? Um, I would say starting off small. It doesn't have to be huge steps. You don't need to cut out like, you know, all the food and drinks that you want to. I think small steps, you know, oh, saving a little bit of money here and saving a little money there, you know, not going out to dinner once in a while or saving money on getting coffee. I know that's a big thing for a lot of people. I think starting off small will build those foundations for larger financial uh, understanding and opportunities such as like understanding like mortgages and, you know, saving for retirement, saving for, you know, your kids' tuition for college and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. I like how you say, you know, like just little steps can mm -hmm. definitely make a difference. You know, is that consistency? Yeah, it, it, it's a small steps. And even, you know, going off on tangent here, it's small steps like brushing your teeth every night, you know, <laughs> or going out and going on a run for even for 30 minutes. It's small steps like that that build a foundation for healthy habits that I really think are the key to building healthy habits is taking the small step. Because if you can't take the small step, you're not able to take the large step in the end. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I like it, man, honestly. Yeah. Great answer. Now, on the other side of the spectrum, what is the worst financial advice that you have received or heard of? I would say not going out and eating food or going out to dinner. And for everyone, it's a little bit different. I think you should enjoy the things that you really enjoy. You, spend, you should spend money on things you enjoy. For other people, it's traveling. You know, some people, it's eating out, like for me. Um, I think the key takeaway is it is moderation. I don't think you should be going out every single day. I don't think you should be traveling every weekend. It's all about moderation and understanding that, okay, I can't spend all the dollars that I make, you know? So for me, I understand I enjoy trying new foods. You know, I enjoy traveling as well, but um, but I'm not going out every day. I'm going out once a, once a month. I want to make it a goal of mine for this new year is try new food, especially in Tucson, like having all these different restaurants and different cuisines here. I enjoy eating out, so I'm going to try to make it a goal of mine to go out once a month. Um, so I, I think is that a lot of people say, a lot of financial advisors say, don't go out, don't eat out, you can make the same food at home. You can't. Those, those are some great chefs out there. They're getting paid to do that. So um, I think the key takeaway out of all is moderation. As long as you're able to operate in your means and you're able to you know, save more than you're making and save more than you're spending, then I think go ahead.
Yeah, great, great answer. Honestly, I think like as long as it is in the budget, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, hell, that's why we do the finances. You know, that's why we do the budget. If it fits in the budget, then hell, yeah. you're allowed to splurge a little bit, right? Yeah. Treat yourself. Absolutely. Are you comfortable with your current financial situation? Um. Yeah. Currently, I am somewhat comfortable, but I do say that I am a little uncomfortable. It's healthy to be a little uncomfortable. If you're comfortable you're compliant and you're you're complacent and that's never good you know you can't be still in the water you got to keep on moving so i'd say you know i'm relatively comfortable but there are some aspects like student loans and you know personal uh spending that i am a little uncomfortable with and i would like to you know shape up a little bit so yeah, yeah i think you're definitely the right path you know just say mm -hmm. like you said you know baby steps will definitely take care of that exactly yeah yeah and you know being a little uncomfortable i like to be you know living on the edge a little bit so like I like the little bit of risk in my life, so. Sounds good, but now we're going to go over a second session called Will You Rather? So same concept, five random generated question. Question number one is, will you rather come from a rich family and have parents who do not love you or come from a poor family and have parents who do love you? I would say poor parents that do love you. I think at the end of the day, and maybe, you know, I'm coming from more of a privileged middle class viewpoint, but I've always seen life as, you know, the relationships you make, you know, at the end of the day, who cares about the money you make? It's tangible. It's going to go away. It's your legacy and the people you interact with. That's what really matters. And I value relationships a lot. I, I mean, I love all my family. I love all my friends. Like, I value those memories and those relationships I've made. The second one is, would you rather earn millions creating a cure for a disease that only saves a thousand people or earn no money creating a cure for a disease that saves five million people? I would say... A cure that saves five million people with no, you know, incentive, no monetary value returned. I mean, in ancient Rome, for the nobles, it was prized for them to give back to the community and expect nothing in return. And I think that's the same mentality that a lot of people should have. Like, money shouldn't drive you to help other people. You should have that innate ability to help other people and that innate drive to help other people just generally because when you bring up someone else you're bringing up yourself as well and that's something i've always believed and that's what it's something i've always tried to do um help everyone i can um and I, I haven't been perfect at it you know but it's something i strive to do as much as i can yeah that human or humanity aspect you know exactly. the monetary one yeah exactly you know at the end of the day money disappears you know like what you leave in this life is you your impact on others and i 100 percent believe that because, you know, the saying, you die twice, once physically, and then once again when the last person that remembers you passes away. And I think your legacy really builds upon the people you interact with. So, Excellent. Question number three. Would you rather go to jail for 10 years for stealing $1 million and keep the money once you're out or pay $1 million for an extra 10 years of your life? I would definitely say the extra 10 years of my life, going back to it, I love the experience of life. I love meeting new people, interacting with all my friends. Hell, if you asked me a few years ago, I'd have been like, oh, jail sounds cool. I would love to do that, you know, uh, just for, you know, just for fun. But you know, seriously, I would love to be here 10 more years because, you know, that's another day with my loved ones and another day where I can wake up, see the sunrise and go to bed, seeing the sunset, you know, and that's things I, I will always cherish. Excellent. Question number four. Would you rather learn how to invest or have someone invest your money for you? I would personally like to invest, learn how to invest on my own. I have a pretty good fundamental knowledge of it, but I, you can never stop learning. And I think a lot of people can, you know, if they have the time, learn how to invest. Um, but if you don't have the time, having someone invest for you is not a bad option at all because you can't split all your time evenly all the time. So, um, yeah, I definitely think I would like personally to learn how to invest, but I can understand where someone else from an, another aspect who doesn't have as much time can have someone else. Yeah, I mean, it's just like paying for it, delegating that task. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And my, my teacher always told me in high school, the finance teacher, he was like, tips are only for waiters and waitresses when it comes to investment. So I was like, all right, that's a really good, that's a really good saying. I might start using that. Uh, <laughs> so I was like, all right, you know what? I would like to learn on my own, you know? So, Cause sometimes at the end of the day, your own hands are all you can trust. Yeah, definitely. And finally, question number five, would you rather invest in individual stocks or a diversified index fund? Ooh, so that's a good question. Um, kind of give it like a two option answer here. Um, if I had more time, individual stocks. If I was more cut for time, ETFs, um, indices like that. 
Um, I personally like right now, because I have a little bit more time on my hand to invest in personal stocks. I like reading up on all the research, but I can definitely see uh, the, ap the appealing, the appealing <laughs> factor of, you know, indices, because it takes a lot of that um, stress, you stress away, like, yeah, you, know, like, you have to spend. Exactly. You have to spend a lot of time researching and it, it's a, it's a big time commitment when you're in, uh, investing in individual stocks. Right now, what would be your top three stocks? Oh, and I know that they will change. You know, from yeah, it always changes. Um, so for me, I have the saying, I always say, I always invest in yeah, bullets and oil. Oh okay. yeah. Cause there's two things, <laughs> at least as of right now that humanity will never run out of and that's war and Oil, oil, sadly, oil. yeah. Um, so I invest a lot in defense contractors and oil companies. Um, so Raytheon, Lockheed, Boeing, um, companies like that. And then on the oil side, Chevron, BP, stuff like that. Um, and especially on the oil side, they pay really good dividends. And that's one thing I've been personally trying to seek is to have my stocks add as a passive income. So dividends, you know, they pay out every quarter after, you know, a meeting. Um, so I'm trying to invest more in dividend stocks, and there's a there's risk involved with that, but it's something I'm willing to dip into just for that extra income. How long does it take you to actually study these companies? Like, let's just say one, because you know we were talking about like, okay, you can just do individual stocks, or you can go look at an ETF, an index fund. You just have to buy it, and then that's it. You know, you forget yeah, about exactly. It. But an individual stock, how long does it take you to actually analyze everything? Yeah, so I don't do a great job at analyzing. I'd say. Realistically, you know, if you're working a full time job, it probably should take, you know, a week or so. I usually spend three, four days. And between those three, four days, maybe a few hours, you know, I check all my different sources, read online, you know, how the company's doing. Um, but I think a week should be really what you should be shooting for, um, getting all the information you can from all different types of sources. And then you should, you know, make your decision on that stock. Personally, three, four days for me, I'm a little bit more uh, risk adverse or. I fat your risk, you know, I'm kind of risky for the biscuit kind of guy. So I'm going to risk a little bit now that I'm young. Um, so I take three to four days. Yeah, that's good. You know, like, even though you said that it has to be like a week, hey, yeah. three to four days, it's pretty spot on. Exactly. And I feel for most people, maybe even a week's really long. But I feel like if ideal situation, I'd spend a week, get all the sources I can, you know, spend as much time as I can analyzing their past, their present, and what, you know, what analysts are saying about their future. And then I'd make a decision. Excellent. So that will conclude our Will You Rather section. Now, what is the best financial decision that you have ever made? I would say investing. Um, I think that's been the best financial decision I've had. Because, you know, my parents taught me to save, but they didn't teach me how to invest. And my teacher in high school taught me that, hey, like, you want your money to make money for you. So your money can just sit in, you know, savings account. But if it's not in a high yield savings account, it's not making anything for you. All you need to do is open a high yield saving savings account and it can make money for you. And investing, usually stock market is averaging 10%. So you're adding 10% right there. So I think investing has definitely been one of the biggest things. So as you're just picking individual stocks, are you actually being in the market? Yeah, uh, so, you know, I've only been investing seriously for about six months. I'm a little bit lower than what the market is right now. I'm sitting around 5%, That's pretty good. which is not bad at all. I, I think the market's averaging between 7 and 10%. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Um, depends on what you're investing in. So, I mean, 5%, I'm not, I'm, I would like to be higher, but, you know, I'm, I'll take it. I understand that investment is a long-term thing. It's not something you can make money in a year or so. It's something that it's going to happen 10, 20, 30 years, you know, in the future. So, I'm perfectly fine with 5%. So, you know, we were talking about uh, baby steps, little by little. Mm -hmm. in, the, in this six months, how much have you been able to, like, invest? Uh, yeah, so I, you know, budget uh, an allocation just straight for investments. So I usually take about $500 for my paycheck and put that straight into investments. You know, I try to diversify my portfolio. You never want to put all eggs in one basket, right? So, you know, I diversify my portfolio based on bullets and oil. So, you know, the, uh, oh, it sounds bad every time I say it. No, oh, not at all. I mean, uh, it's your personal opinion. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. So, you know, I diversify my portfolio like that. And there's some other stocks in there, but I, I try to spread it out pretty evenly. You know, I really like to say this on every video that Money Melissa is just an open space. You know, mm -hmm. everyone is right. Everyone is wrong. Everyone yeah. is neutral because that's the beauty of this. You know, like you can say anything you want, you know, people mm -hmm. will just get your perspective and that's what we're doing. Exactly. Yeah. So, all right. Now on the other side of the spectrum, what is the worst financial decision that you have ever made? Ooh, I'd say the worst one I've ever made was 
not being as aggressive in my student loan payments. Um, Cause I realized that if I want to you know, move up in life and m build wealth, debt's the one thing that's really holding you back. And, you know, student loans is at least the big thing for me right now. And not being super aggressive and paying that off is going to limit how much wealth I can build in the short term and in the long term, because I won't be able to start building wealth until I pay it off. Wow. How much did you have when you left Penn State? Um, so when I left, I had about, oh, I want to say around 30K, okay. 30,000. So it wasn't a crazy amount. And I was very fortunate to get a, you know, a very high paying job. So I've been very aggressive in paying it, but I would like to be more aggressive, you know, like. Um, I, I I have financed, you know, in my budget how much I should pay, and I can go a little bit higher, but maybe I should. And I don't, I don't know, you know. I'll tell you mine. I mean, it's on on the actual intro video of the channel. I I left the the University of Arizona with you know my systems engineering degree mm -hmm. with twenty three thousand five hundred. Yeah. And man, I was like, how am I gonna be able to pay this off? You know. Yeah. Yeah. So it's tough. It really is, and and you see that throughout the entire country right now. It's people are crippled with student debt and. Going back to the earlier question of, you know, top three, you know, college degrees, I gave all STEM degrees, but there's jobs like, you know, being teachers and like degrees like that, teachers and other degrees that people we need in society, but they're not high paying and people are crippled with student loans. And that's the thing I hate about it is that you see people arguing, oh, you know, those kids should have gone into a better degree, but you need teachers, you need hospitality majors, you need, you know, people that in other jobs and it's just it's a real shame that you see people just arguing about this when college shouldn't be unaffordable to people you shouldn't be taking out massive loans to you know want to get a higher education and it's something fundamentally i mean so it's a very big tangent but yeah, yeah, it's something no, it's fundamentally good. that we should look at as a country and as a society like yeah as a country because the rest of the world you don't see this you know sure. and it shouldn't be acceptable you know no, oh, yeah. I mean, I've heard of like people that went to medical school that, you know, have like half a million dollars. I mean, exactly. They're going to be able to pay it off, you know, but still, yeah, it's a lot of money. It, exactly. It, it shouldn't be that expensive to go to college. And, and coming from Penn State, you know, it's a bigger school, you know, big football school. But when they're spending, what, $500 million on a new athletics facility and they're still increasing our tuition every single year, it's like, come on, man. Like, Football is already bringing in so much money, and not not to knock off the football program. I'm a huge football guy. I love football, but like, you shouldn't be screwing us kids. You know, like it's just when we're trying to give back to society, they're just ripping everything away from us and trapping people that aren't able to pay their debts back. You know, and it's just a cycle that never ends, and it's it's not something I'd been comfortable with. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Mm -hmm. If you go back in time and change one financial decision, which it would it be, and why? probably go back to student loans and I would say being more aggressive in trying to get scholarships because you know I was a very lazy kid trying to do that I, I applied to a few scholarships I actually got a Burger King scholarship I know. Was, yeah <laughs> I always tell people like what the hell like I was like yeah Burger King just gave me a scholarship um, I wish I applied to more scholarships and even after I got into college you can still apply to scholarships even when you're in college and I wish I did that because student loans have been a very big hamper and I wish I could you know reduce that so I can actually start building wealth and start setting up for long-term uh, goals like buying a house or, you know, um, investing in property and stuff like that. So as you know, since you were talking about one of your professors, or your teachers in high school telling you about investments and all that, my math teacher would actually tell us like, hey guys, if you're going to go to college, make sure that you actually invest some time applying for a scholarship. Yeah. Because think about it. And then, man, it was like an opportunity cost class because she was like, look, let's say that you spend I don't know, seven hours, you know, like writing an essay or something like that. Mm -hmm. But you get $10,000. Exactly, yeah. So looking at it that way, it's like, wow, yeah. And I, I'm good now, right? I should have done that too, you know? I think a lot of people are like that. And it, it sucks because my parents are like, make your, you know, write those uh, essays. Uh, essays for the scholarships. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll do it, I'll do it. I wish I actually did it. But um, I did a few and I got one or two scholarships. But I wish I'd, you know, hammer that as much as I could because... Coming out of college with no debt, that'd be amazing. Yeah, definitely, you know, puts you ahead of the game. Exactly, yeah. Puts you way ahead of the game. It's like starting off a race, like, 400 meters ahead of everyone else, you know? It's a huge difference. All right. Finally, we're going to go over our last session called What Do You Think? This one is about opinions and thoughts on money. Same process, five random generated questions. Question number one is, what is the best way to invest money? It really depends. If you have the time, I would say invest your money in the stocks. If you don't have the time, get a financial advisor to invest for you. Okay. Excellent. Question number two. 
should we have a financial advisor to have a better understanding of our finances? I think, uh, same thing again, <laughs> yeah. If you have the time, you should read and you should try to your best to understand your finances. But if you don't have the time and you, you know want a little bit of a crutch, then yeah, I say have a finance, uh, finance advisor. Because even me right now, I don't have enough time. And you know, a finance advisor is paid to know everything about finance. So it's not a bad thing to have someone like that in your back pocket. But for me, I like, I trust, I trust my own hands. And, you know, going back to what my teacher said, you know, tips are for waiters and waitresses. So I like to have all the knowledge in my head, you know, and, and in my hands. So, And I think of this is where we, you can actually see that the questions are randomly generated because, mm -hmm. you know, they're kind of like correlated. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they were like picked individually. They would be completely different. But yeah, that's the beauty of this. <laughs> Actually, now question number three, what is the most important skill to learn about money? I would say that it's, you know, having your money make money for you. I think you can save all you want, but if it's not making, if it's not generating any income for you, then it's kind of just not doing anything. You're losing, you know, value there. You're losing the opportunity for you to make more money without doing any work. So I think investing is yeah. a huge thing. And I think, you know, your buying power goes down, you know, with inflation. And all. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So excellent. Question number four. How many income streams should everyone have? And if you can give us like, okay, depending on your number, some examples. Yeah. So I would say everyone should have maybe like two to three think active income. So your job, and then you should have maybe one or two um, passive income. So either stocks or, you know, investment properties, something like that. Um, for me, like I want to have like my regular job, my nine to five, what I work with, have stocks as well, generating, you know, maybe like a hundred bucks in dividends. Um, and then I really want to get into real estate and investment properties because I think that's a huge way to make passive income. And I know it's a lot of time and a lot of, you know, upfront capital get invested in it. But I think overall in the long term, it pays off. So it's something I'm very much looking into. But, you know, going back to the debt, you know, college debt's really straddling my way to, you know, invest in property right now. And not to mention it's a really bad, buy, really bad time to buy with mortgage rates through the roof and everything. So... How long do you think that it will take you to pay off your student loans right now? Oh, so I budgeted it out. I'm looking at about 18 months right now. I think so. Maybe two years at the tops. Um, but I want to get my MBA. So hopefully my company can pay for it. If not, then, you know, we we'll, we'll might be looking at some more extended, um, you know, extended college tuition. So I think that is good because you're, you know, investing in yourself too. So that will eventually. Yeah, off. exactly. I've, I've seen plenty of uh, companies that will pay extra, a little bit extra if you have, you know, a master's degree. So that's one of the big reasons why I want to get that. Excellent. Now, the final question of this section is, what is one thing that successful people have in common? I'd say a good work ethic. Um, successful people, you know, never stop grinding. You know, they, they always, you know, try to work hard and take the extra step to do that. They never are complacent and complying with, you know, the status quo. And I, I think that's one thing I would need to work on better because, you know, I worked a ton of hours today, this week. Yeah. But, you know, today I was like, oh, you know what? I did it as much as I could this week. I'm going to take it nice and easy, spend maybe like 20, 30 minutes on my phone. That's not something a successful person would do. They would keep on working through it. And then once the clock is done, then they'll maybe, you know, end off the day. Um, but I think, a good work ethic and, you know, being able to just keep on working hard is what successful people do. Excellent. So that concludes our what do you think section. Finally, to wrap it all up, is there anything else that you would like to share with the audience? Do you have any final thoughts? Um, I'd say it's just never, you know, too late to start your financial journey. You know, I got very lucky, started very early, but I know plenty of people that start a lot later in their lives and are extremely successful. So I think being able to you know, take the risk, you know, take the leap of faith. And, you know, it's tough sometimes. You're not going to get it right the first time, but it's baby steps. And that's all, that's what life is about, you know, taking one step after the other. Excellent. Rishi, thank um, you so much. Yeah, of course, Rishi. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me.